Hello, welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just to note that if your question is for one particular representative, just make sure to name the school in your question so he or she knows it is for them. Your camera and microphones are off. Panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones at the same place that you signed up for this one. Also, this presentation is being recorded. It will be available within about a week, again, at the same website where you registered. Very quickly, we are in session A5, top center part of the screen um, that you can see. Those are the six institutions that will be presenting during this session and the order of their presentations. All right, so now I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way and turn it over to our first institution. We'll hear from the representative from Texas Tech University. Thank you so much. Thank you all everybody for joining us today. Let me get my screen up and running here. Make sure I've got the right one. Perfect. All right. Welcome everybody. My name is Taylor Chilka. I'm with Texas Tech University and we are going to get started here. Texas Tech, if you're not familiar with us, um, or you may know us from being Pat Mahomes School um, now, as much as we talk about it, but uh, we're 40,000 students here located in West Texas. We're a tier one research institution. We do have a 20 to one student to teacher ratio on our campus. And we are a diversity champion in terms of insight and diversity. So we actually are a Hispanic serving inst institution um, within the state of Texas. And we are a top public, uh, top public university by US News world reports on there. And then you'll see our average SAT score for last fall, except this year we were test optional. Um, and we have not decided if we are going to be test optional just yet for the next year. Um, but that will give you an idea of our historical where we have been. So if you're not quite sure where Lubbock, Texas is, we are located, like I said, West Texas. It's about a four and a half hour drive from Fort Worth, Texas. That's actually where I'm located. Um, and then about a 25 or 45 minute flight from DFW. So if you can fly into Dallas, Fort Worth or Dallas Love Field, you're able to connect into our international airport there in Lubbock. Um, that is probably smaller than your high school, but we still have that ability to get you in and out of the city. The city itself is a true college town. Wouldn't be there without the Texas Tech University. Um, and Lubbock wouldn't, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. It's over 25,000 residents there. Uh, because the state of Texas is so large, most of our students do come from over 300 miles away. So with you coming from, uh, you know, from where you're coming from, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, you're going to have students that are coming from just as far or further than you are uh, and still be in the state of Texas, which creates a true college atmosphere where students stay longer on our 1800 acre campus, which you can see a picture of behind me. On the main campus, a couple things that we have. Let's talk about the academic side of things. We do have 10 academic colleges, over 150 majors and minors throughout those 10 academic colleges. We have the Texas Tech School of Law. We also have the Texas Tech Health Sciences Center on our main campus. It is a comprehensive health science center. Uh, they're located in Lubbock. It is also our tier one or our level one trauma unit in County Hospital. All of that is on that main campus. Starting this next uh, fall, we are starting the, it's going to be the second vet school in Texas, first one over 100 years, the 33rd in the United States. It's going to be in Amarillo, Texas, so it's about two hours north of Lubbock, uh, but we will have the Texas Tech School of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, it was a big thing for us. Uh, where we are located in uh, West Texas, there are more cows than people, um, so the need for veterinary medicine in rural, uh, rural areas was huge, and that's kind of where we're going to serve. This was a, a list of our academic colleges that you have across our main campus. Some highlight points, the Ed Whitaker College of Engineering. It is a top 100 public, uh, top 100, uh, uh, I cannot talk today, hello Sunday, um, top 100 um, in the college rankings for uh, engineering. I cannot talk. Um, a college of Business as well. Our business program over the last five years has had a 93% higher rate for our students. So um, it's one of their big bragging points. They do um, uh, we make sure that that is the focus within the College of Business. Of course, every college does focus on that. And then another circle back to that College of Engineering, because I lost my train of thought there. Our engineering, even though it's about 6,000 students on our main campus that are within uh, undergrad in engineering, we do keep a 49 uh, max on our uh, size of classes. So you do get that hands-on class sizes within that. And we do require a study abroad within our College of Engineering and College of Architecture, but every major actually has opportunities for study abroad. 
fingers crossed we get back to that um, coming out of this COVID craziness um, in the future. We do have a campus in Spain and that is pretty popular for our students to go to for the study abroad, as well as we do have Texas Tech University in Costa Rica, which has a um, college of human sciences component to it with restaurant hotel management and some other things like that. Let's talk about our community real quick, talking about Texas Tech. I mentioned all the students are coming from so far away um, where they stay out there longer. We have 19 residence halls. All of our new first time students are required to live in a residence hall. Uh, that picture there is our lazy river. It's pretty popular in the summer months. It does get warm in Texas. So um, it is nice to kick around and float and study or hang out by the the lazy river. Um, we have over 550 student organizations. That's a big component with any college, but obviously with Texas Tech and, and our students coming from so far away from home, we really want to make sure our students get involved. You name it, they've got an organization for it. If not, we push our students to create one. Uh, we are in the Big 12 Athletic Conference. What's really cool for our students, you are a Red Raider when you come to Texas Tech. You get to go to your sporting events at home for no cost, extra cost to you. It is part of our tuition and fees. So swipe your ID card. You get to go to those football games. Um, our basketball team is actually pretty good. Uh, our baseball team is uh, number three in the country right now. So you get to go um, and experience that on the main campus. Real quick, we're just going to go over some admissions details just so you kind of know them. I'm not going to go into um, super complex details. Those are things you can reach out to me, but we are on Apply Texas. If you're not familiar with Apply Texas, uh, in typical Texas fashion, we have our own common application for college. We are also on the Common App, so either one of those. We do have a $75 application fee. We do have a fee waiver process. However, we do not accept NACAC, SAT, ACT, um, or any outside fee waivers. We do base it off of family income and financial need. We will need a high school transcript. It does not need to be official. It can be an unofficial high school transcript, but we do need, if you have dual credit and you want to send that in, it does need to be an official transcript. As of fall 2021, so the class that we're wrapping up right now, if you're a senior, we were test optional. Any juniors, sophomores, or uh, new first time students or freshmen, uh, we are not sure if we're going to be test optional. So if you have the ability to take an SAT or ACT, I definitely strongly recommend that. We should be coming out with that uh, within the next couple of weeks. Our Board of Regents just met. Uh, on that. This is our admissions process for Texas Tech on the assured admissions category. We do look at your class rank, and then we will also look at your SAT, ACT. And then lastly, but not least, we do have a holistic review process I want you to look at. And then last, sorry, this is my last one, our tuition and fees. Uh, notice Oklahoma students, you have your own fees. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone, if you have questions for any of our uh, representatives, use the Q&A button that you can find on your screen. If it is for a specific school, just make sure that you uh, name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from McPherson College. Hi everyone, my name is Josh Huben. I'm the Director of Admissions here at McPherson College located in McPherson, Kansas. Um, if the state of Kansas had a dartboard and you threw it and hit a bullseye, you would hit McPherson. So we're very centrally located here in Kansas. Um, we're a small four-year private school, so 800 plus students here at McPherson College, around 870, I think, right now. We have a nice size 27 acre campus that kind of resides on the edge of our city. So it very much feels like we're kind of in our own community. Um, 16 intercollegiate athletic teams, over 30 student clubs and organizations. And we have three bulldogs that reside around campus. The little furry brown chubby one here, that one's mine. She sleeps at the foot of my bed at night. <clears throat> Two thirds of our graduates secured a job before graduation last year, even, even with the craziness that we all had to deal with with COVID. We're very proud of that. Um, 98% within six months of graduation. So those are two of the things from the last school year that we're the most proud of here at McPherson that our students are still out there getting jobs out in the industries. You'll see a little highlight here of our Bulldog Adventures program. That's one of our newest clubs and organizations for students on campus. Uh, McPherson College is the third largest land holding college in the world. So that's pretty cool. We have a ton of outdoor land. You'll see some of it here that our students are hiking through now. Um, available for students who love to do any kind of outdoor things, whether it be kayaking, camping, hiking, you name it. So we have a, a large number of outdoor excursions that we plan throughout the year for students and then, you know, numerous um, smaller excursions and competitions and things that happen in between the large ones as well. Um, one of our 
you know, uh, benchmark programs, I guess you'd call it, is our health sciences program. So health sciences and healthcare management, uh, primarily geared towards uh, rural medicine. So um, being able to educate students who want to go back and work in rural communities where there's a lack of personnel in some of these rural medical facilities. So uh, we offer a, a $25,000 health science scholarship for these students every year. We give away 10 of those a year. So really encourage our students to hop on and, and apply for those as quickly as they can. See just kind of a list of our academic majors that are here at McPherson. Some of the ones that might jump out to you as a little strange, automotive restoration. Uh, we're the only school in the country that offers a four year bachelor's degree in automotive restoration. So that's kind of one of our really cool benchmark programs. It's limited enrollment. We only take about 40 students per year. Presidential scholarship, this is another important program that we offer here at McPherson. So um, students can come and participate in presidential scholarship days. We offer, this year we offered three of those in-person visits um, throughout the year and then two virtual competitions. So students can gain anywhere from 500 to 6,000 additional scholarship dollars per year on top of their general college um, merit scholarships and activity scholarships here at McPherson. And then we also give away a full tuition scholarship uh, at those presidential scholarship days as well. So we want students to sign up for those early. Um, the other thing that's a nice highlight for us here at McPherson right now is our student debt project. Okay, so um, in the news, the buzzword student debt, right? So we've developed a project um, or a program here at McPherson that helps us to combat that, okay? So um, financial literacy, financial education, jobs, and student mentorship to educate them on student debt and some of the ways to manage their money and help them graduate with little to no debt. Um, we currently have about 170 students in that program. The average that they've reduced their student debt by as participants of that program is about $10,000 per student. And we even have some students who are out there who will graduate debt free from a small private college, which is a really big deal. Um, one of the biggest ways you'll see on the bottom right here that we are able to combat that. So through a network of alumni and donors and folks, um, we match anything that a student works to contribute to their student account 25 cents on the dollar. OK, those jobs don't have to be on campus. Those jobs can be anywhere. We actually encourage students to work off campus because they make more money than uh, federal work study minimum wage. Okay. And any dollar that the student contributes to their student account, if they show us a pay stub that says they've worked that many hours, um, we'll match that 25 cents on the dollar, even for summer wages. So we think that's a, a very important piece of what we're doing with the student debt project here at McPherson College. You'll see here our total cost just over $40,000, average aid just over $21,000 federal and state grants, employment earnings. This is a nice path to zero dollars in student loan debt after graduation. Uh, we know not every student receives this 9675 in federal or in state grants, but we'll just try to find you another pathway. This is just an easy black and white one. Career services, we talked earlier about two thirds of our grads securing a job before graduation. Um, I think it's 16 consecutive years now, 100% of our students who applied to grad school were accepted into grad school. So our pre-professional students are doing a great job with that as well. Um, we're also a US World News Report best college in the regional Midwest. Um, and we've been on their honor roll for the last six years, I believe, for great colleges to work for. So it's a great little place in central Kansas. And if you're looking for somewhere in small and private, um, come give us a shot. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our presenters. And if it's for a specific school, just make sure you name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University. Hi, hey everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tina Barr. I'm an assistant director of admissions at the Prescott campus. And I do have my counterpart for Daytona here with me. I'll let him introduce himself quickly. Hey, good afternoon. My name is George DeWeese. I'm a representative for Emory Riddle uh, for the Daytona Beach campus. Thanks, Tina. So George will be answering any questions you guys want to drop down in the chat uh, or the Q&A section. 
And I'm going to share with you guys a quick video so you can see a little bit of our campus and then I'll go over some details with you after that. to start off by sharing that video is just to really emphasize um, the term hands-on. You'll hear me say that a couple of times, but on either of our campus, over 90% of our students are undergraduate students. So um, all of the laboratories, all of the students you just saw in that video are undergraduate students. Um, so I do think that that's something for you to be aware of. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the differences between the Daytona and the Prescott campus. I'll touch really quickly on a couple of facts on our university. Uh, but we have been ranked number one in aerospace engineering by US News and World Report for about 19 years now. Uh, we do on the Prescott campus have the first and only College of Security Intelligence that's going to incorporate programs um, such as our global security intelligence as well as our cybersecurity program. On the Daytona campus, we do have the first and only aerospace physiology program, which is a really, really fascinating degree program and a phenomenal pre-med program as well. Uh, we do have an ABET accreditation, which is key for engineering. Uh, we are actually now one of only eight universities in the nation that has an ABET accreditation tied to our cybersecurity program. Um, so again, a couple quick differences between Daytona and Prescott. Um, depending on where you are right now, you very well might prefer the weather in Florida. Um, definitely a little bit warmer. Um, Daytona campus does have about 7,000 students and the average class size is about 27 students. Um, they do have over 20 intercollegiate sports. We may be a small school, but we're quite competitive. Um, they are NCAA Division II. And the Daytona campus, they do have the Air Force, Army, and Navy ROTC. Um, the Prescott campus is a little bit less than half the size of Daytona. So the Prescott campus is about 3,000 students. The average class size is about 24 students. Um, and then we are in the NAIA. Uh, we also have the Air Force and the Army ROTC on the Prescott campus. Um, so you shift over, you'll notice the outcomes there. We do have 94% of our students um, that graduate within one year have a job that's specific to their degree. So those numbers are not including students that are going to work for say Postmates or Instacart or DoorDash. Um, these are students that are graduating with a job specific to their degree, 94%. And that is more recent number. So including everything going on right now, we still are really proud of that statistic. Um, we do have our application process is rolling. So it's not too late to apply. Um, either George or myself will share in the chat our waiver code, which you are welcome to use as a thank you for joining us today. Um, that waiver code is PCMS. And again, we'll drop that um, in the chat for you guys. Um, the application process, like I said, is rolling. So we started accepting students for our application process at about mid-July. Um, we've had students that will apply up to a couple weeks before school starts. Wouldn't recommend that, <laughs> a little too much stress. Um, in addition to the application, you'll wanna send us a copy of your transcript. It does not need to be official. You'll also want to um, consider sending in letters of recommendation. They are optional, but we definitely encourage it, especially for students looking to get into flight or engineering right now, which are fairly competitive. Uh, we've been test score optional for several years. It has nothing to do with COVID. Uh, we recognize that not all students test to their ability. And so you do not need to submit your test score. 
I highly encourage you to reach out to your admissions counselor if you're not sure whether or not it would be in your best interest to submit that. And of course, you're welcome to submit a resume or just any type of an essay that shares a little bit more about who you are and what it is that um, is so, why you're so drawn to a specific degree program. Um, talk a little bit about financial aid, but 90% of our students do receive some type of financial aid. For those of you just starting to get into learning about colleges, one of the really key things to ask is whether or not a school is a merit-based school or a need-based school. Um, so for us, we're both. Merit-based means it's based off of your merit. Your merit consists of things such as your test scores, your GPA, that type of thing. So we don't care how much or how little your family makes. It's entirely based on your merit. Um, so we review students automatically for merit scholarships. There's nothing additional that you need to do. Um, you will automatically be reviewed for that. Um, for the need-based scholarships, that's typically based on something called your FAFSA. Um, you definitely want to learn about that if you're not familiar with that term already. Um, but the FAFSA will determine if you qualify for any additional need-based aid from us. And then, of course, we do accept any outside scholarships. Um, thank you guys so much and continue learning as much as you possibly can. Thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone yet again that if you have questions for any of our presenters, just use the Q&A button to type those at any time. And if it's for a specific school, just name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Webster University. Hello, my name is Andrew Lowey and I'm the associate, let me start the video there, that might help. My name is Andrew Lowey, I'm the associate director of admissions at Webster University. Um, for a little bit of overview of Webster, just to give you an idea of what we're all about, we are a smaller university located in the suburbs of St. Louis, specifically Webster Groves, Missouri. 2,400 full-time students. Um, as you can see, most of our classes are capped at 25 students. So this is definitely a smaller school. A big hallmark of what we do, you do get into your major right away. So whatever it is that you're looking to study, we don't make you take general classes for a year or two and then you finally get to do what you're really interested in. We, we do have you get into your major right away. That's really important to us. Uh, over hundred different academic programs uh, divided up in five colleges and schools. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail and then also incredible study abroad programs uh, as well. Here's our admissions information. We are on rolling admissions, just, which means we process the applications as they come in. We recommend an application uh, deadline of January 1st. However, um, if you're a senior, we will take applications really up through uh, and through the summertime. So it is not too late to apply. Um, test optional, like a lot of schools. For those students who, who uh, did take the ACT or SAT this past year, you can see that data there. Um, uh, and as well as the mid 50%. So this is the middle 50% when you see those numbers, quarter 25% uh, were less than that figure, 25% were more, or overall acceptance rate is about 78%. So I would classify this as a, as a somewhat selective school. And if you are going into art, dance, music, or theater, there is a separate uh, audition or portfolio review uh, to go along with that. So I wanna break down just briefly our, our five academic areas. This is the College of Arts and Sciences. Some people might, call it the liberal arts or the humanities. This is where a lot of those traditional college majors live, all your sciences, your English, also have some unique programs, international human rights, international relations. Uh, we have a philosophy program as well too, all the, the pre-professional programs uh, you might expect. And this is a brand new science building only a couple years old that you can see there. So our science majors really love um, having that. This is the fine and performing arts at Webster University. As I said, all these majors require an audition or portfolio review for specific acceptance into those programs, but our five minute performing arts are very comprehensive. We actually offer all these specific degrees in these specific areas. So uh, all the tech theater programs, lots of areas in, in, in music, plus all the, the programs in art and dance. So it's a very comprehensive program in, um, in the fine arts area. Then our School of Communications offers quite a bit as well too. Um, everything from animation and film production, video game design, all the way up to script writing, sound recording and engineering, of course, this is what you're seeing right here. Sports communications is, is a growing major for us as, uh, as well, too. But we also have the traditional majors in journalism and public relations, photography, those sorts of things. But again, as I mentioned, the best part about this, you will get into these programs right away. As a freshman, uh, you are taking these specific classes. So uh, our students really love that aspect of it. This is our School of Business and Technology. So if you're going into anything business related or um, anything related to math or computer science, including our new cybersecurity program uh, that lives, lives right here, as well as a program in sports and entertainment management. 
So that is all out of the School and Business of Business and Technology. And then lastly, we have our School of Education. This is for students who want to go on uh, to be a teacher, uh, anywhere from the kindergarten level uh, all the way up uh, through high school. So all of these areas are offered um, in that area. As I mentioned, we have a very comprehensive study abroad program. We love study abroad. We really encourage you to study abroad so much so that we, uh, we pay for your plane ticket to go abroad. That's how much we want you to, to study abroad. And a lot of these campuses are actually Webster campuses. So you don't have to worry about transferring foreign credits. You're still at Webster, you're just in a different location. So, um, and since you're still at Webster and at most of these locations, your scholarships and financial aid travel with you. So again, you don't have to you know, pay in whatever the local currency is and hope the exchange rates in your favor. It's really, um, that's really important that, that we're able to do that. So this is what our campus housing looks like. Um, this really is our, our, one of our dorms there. That's not a stock photo that we just happened to drop in. That really is what it looks like there. Um, they're all suite styles. You can see the room layout here. No matter what housing situation you have on campus, it's all this, what I would call this semi-private suite style uh, arrangement. So uh, it works out really, really nice. And um, our students really love that arrangement uh, across the board there. If you're 35 miles or further, you have to live on campus for your first two years. So uh, please keep that in mind. And yes, we do provide free laundry. So um, uh, that's uh, something you don't have to worry about, which is really nice. Some tuition, financial aid and scholarships. We don't have any in-state, out-of-state tuition. Uh, we encourage students to complete the FAFSA for maximum consideration. We do have these academic scholarships though that range from 13 to $19,000. And these are, you're gonna get these scholarships no matter what your financial situation is, no matter what's on the FAFSA, if you're eligible for one of these academic or merit-based scholarships, you're gonna receive one of those. And you can see the basic requirement uh, to get that. We also have a leadership scholarship available. We have a chancellor scholarship. We have some diversity scholarships available as well too. We do have a lot of financial aid and scholarships overall. That's very important to us. A couple of examples of what our graduates are doing um, after graduation, that is Leah holding the Oscar for Frozen. Uh, she works for Disney Feature Animation. We have graduates on Broadway. Uh, we have uh, one of our graduates is the Late Show, uh, director of the Late Show with Seth Meyers. Uh, and then we have a recording engineer, several actually in Nashville, professional musicians, and then producers as well too, uh, who have their own production companies uh, in Hollywood and, and elsewhere. So uh, lots of stuff going on here with our, uh, with our graduates and, and opportunities for that. This is the last slide, second to last slide, probably my favorite slide because this is who we are. Um, FIT is really important. And these are the kinds of students that go to Webster. So I like this slide a lot because it really gives you an idea of the kind of students that come, uh, come to Webster and where you will be comfortable. So uh, that's the slide I like to end on other than these are some next steps and you can look at those uh, as well too. So uh, thanks very much and uh, enjoy learning about the rest of the colleges. Thank you very much. If you have questions for any of our representatives, use the Q&A button. If it's for a specific one, just make sure to include the school name in the question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from DePaul University. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Fink. I'm an admission counselor at DePaul. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my presentation. Alrighty, so DePaul University is a private Catholic liberal arts university located in Chicago. You can see a picture of part of our campus right here. Um, I love opening with this slide because I think it gives you a good um, representative idea of not just how large our campus is within Chicago, but also how close we are to downtown. Um, we are located in Lincoln Park, which is a northern neighborhood about 15 minutes north of downtown Chicago, um, which you can see those high rise buildings down there. Um, that's the area of Chicago called The Loop. Um, we also have a campus down there as well. If you're interested in areas like business, communications, com or computing and digital media, um, most of your colleges, uh, most of your classes will be downtown. Um, so now to just go over a brief run through of the university. Um, so we are quite a large university. We have a little over 22,000 total students. We are currently the largest Catholic university in the nation and in the top 10 largest private schools in the US. Um, that being said, we really pride ourselves on being able to have pretty small class sizes. You can see there the average class size is about 22 students. So even though we are such a large university and we're able to provide our students just really um, amazing access to um, 
um, not only their professors, but also the students in their classes, um, as well as, you know, internship opportunities and clubs and activities and all those things I'll go over in a second. Um, we also are a very community based, you know, university, we have a lot of um, specific values that center around community service, diversity, access and attainment of a college education. Um, so our students are really close, really tight knit. Um, and you can see that reflected in our average class size. Um, we were founded in 1898 in Chicago, and we were one of the first universities in the state of Illinois to admit women and people of color. So I mentioned those um, mission values of access and attainment um, of a college degree. Those are really foundational to who we are. About 45% of our students are students of color. About a third are first generation college students. So they're the first in their families to go to college. Um, and we do have students from all 50 states as well as 111 countries. You can see down there under student demographics Graphics, about 43% of our students are coming from out of state, um, with the majority of our students coming from either Chicago or the surrounding suburbs. Um, we do have students, again, from all over. You can see our top 10 feeder states there. We get a lot of our students from California. We have a big Midwestern presence as well, um, as well as students from areas like Texas, New York, and Florida. Um, as far as academics go, we have over 130 majors. You can see the top five listed here are film and television, health sciences, accounting, psychology, and computer science. I think that gives a pretty good idea of just how diverse our students' academic interests are as well. Um, we have 10 different schools and colleges. I won't name them right now, but feel free to check them out on our website. Um, our largest uh, colleges include our Driehaus College of Business, which is ranked in the top 10 for undergraduate entrepreneurship. And and then we also have um, amazing programs in our College of Computing and Digital Media. So if you're interested in areas like film and television, which is listed here, and computer science, um, but also maybe more specialized areas in technology, such as graphic design, game design, user experience design, um, as well as several others, we, we've got that at DePaul. Um, we also have a College of Communication, which houses majors like PR and advertising and journalism, um, as well as a College of Science and Health, which you can see um, health sciences and psychology being two of our more popular majors as well. We also have a College of Education, um, a College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, a College of uh, Theater, and a College of Music. I said I wasn't going to name all the major or all the colleges and then I did. Um, so that's just to give you again a snapshot of what you can study at DePaul. Um, as far as getting involved on and off campus, being in Chicago, we really do have a lot of options. Um, we have over 350 student organizations. You can see some of the examples listed here. Um, many of our students are involved in both on and off campus activities. About 70% of our students end up graduating with at least one internship. So we really do encourage our students to seek um, to seek job access out, outside of DePaul. Um, and we have an amazing career center that will help you. Um, we actually do have two different different career up uh, career um like pre-professional programming uh, services specifically for freshmen um, with scholarships attached to both of those as well. So we really do want to make sure that um, you know we're providing you those resources both in a um, professional sense, but also, um, you know, maybe make it a little more enticing to come if you're getting that extra scholarship money. Um, we also have um, over 500 companies recruit on our campus actively each year. And again, just being in Chicago, we have connections to um, Fortune 500 companies, um, small businesses, nonprofits, really anything you can think of. 95% um, of our students um, who, 95% uh, of our graduates are employed or continuing their education um, right after graduation. Um, just a little bit about the application process. We are on the Common App um, and it is free to apply. Um, so really no reason not to, right? Uh, we have been actually test optional since 2012. At the time we were the largest private school in the US to go test optional. So again, just going back to those mission values of access and attainment of a higher education degree, really important to us and that's why we are test optional. Um, we also, every student who is admitted to DePaul does receive an academic scholarship and you can be considered for financial financial need-based grants if you file the FAFSA, um, or if you're ineligible to file the FAFSA, we also do have um, an in-house um, financial aid form as well. So um, I think I'm about time, so I'll go ahead and, and stop talking, but um, hope to uh, get to talk to you all more soon. Thanks. Thank you very much. Again, questions to any of our presenters, use the Q&A button. Make sure to name the school if it is for a specific institution. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from University of East Anglia. 
All right. Thank you so much. I'll get my camera on in a second. Maybe did this in the wrong order. Of course I did. Uh, welcome to Sunday afternoon, everybody with admissions representatives. Um, so my name is Alana Stewart. You'll see me in two seconds. Um, and I am the regional manager for the University of East Anglia. And I'm based in Michigan, so not too far from you all. So we did a nice venture across the United States. Now we're going to head across the pond to the UK um, to see another option for you for university. So the University of East Anglia was founded in 1963. We are a public campus-based and research university. So we have a large research output. Um, a lot of our professors and the, reach they're, or the research they're doing are um, heavily, heavily cited in other works. We do have a wide variety of subjects that I will show you a bit later, and those are kind of spread out over 160 undergraduate courses, which in the UK is what we refer to as majors. You might be more familiar with that terminology. Overall, we have about 17,000 students, so that makes us maybe on the larger side of campuses, but kind of to the smaller side of that. Um, and then 17% of our students are international. Um, we are a world top 200 institution and within the UK top 25. The reason why I mentioned rankings here is because you may never heard of UEA, but we do want to let you know that it is a very legitimate place for you to be studying um, and we hope you do consider us and other UK options. The location of UEA is in England, so we are in one of the countries that comprise the UK, um, and we're in Norwich, so about an hour and a half northeast of London by train. We do have our own international airport, so it is easy to get to us, but we are a smaller city of about 200,000 people. Um, we are located about 30 minutes from the coast, so if you like to go to the beach, that is a possibility for you. You can take the train there, um, and we are in the beautiful countryside, so not only are you kind of a destination nation city for that area, um, but that gives you a lot of shopping options, um, again, being the largest city for that, um, but you also do have the options to kind of relax uh, in the countryside. The city itself, you can see the pictures. We do have a castle. We have two cathedrals as well as 30 medieval churches in the city, so um, there's a lot of history steeped into uh, Norwich itself. We are voted one of the most affordable cities to live in by the Student Living Index. We're also also known as one of the best places to live and that was um, that that um, designation was given to us by the Times. And we also are one of the most vegan friendly cities. So we have one of the, most, the highest number of vegan uh, restaurants per resident. So if you have any dietary restrictions, we are definitely a great place to be going for that. Um, if you have seen the movie Jingle Jangle or watched that on Netflix, um, the scene, the snowball fighting scene was actually filmed in Norwich. So you may not have realized it, but you've seen Norwich before potentially in your life. We're also uh, filming destinations for some other films. We talk about Norwich as being one of the best features of our university. Um, students absolutely fall in love with the area. Our campus is about three miles from the proper city center on about 320 acres. You can see there is a lake there and a lot of green space. In a normal year, we would have 60 or more music gigs on campus. Um, so that's awesome to see some larger names from the US, but also learn about other uh, musicians and bands and groups that are from the UK and even Europe. Our library is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We also have one of the largest sports parks in Great Britain. We have a couple new buildings. So on the first slide, you saw our new science building. We have a brand new one that's going to be completed soon for arts and humanities. And we also have a new center of productivity, which is built specifically for engineering students and engineers within the area. We do have accommodation on campus and you are guaranteed accommodation for your first year and most of students will live off in their second and third years. Um, so in the UK degrees are only three years so that is a nice feature to save some time and also potentially save some money depending on where else you're looking at. You'll see in the top left hand corner of your screen, the Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts. That is our own museum on campus, but you'll also notice that it is the um, Avengers headquarters. So if you've seen the movies, the Avengers, we are featured in that film. So you've also seen UEA potentially on the big screen. Um, one of the co-directors studied um, with us and he studied script writing. So that's kind of a cool thing too. We do offer support for students, including dedicated international student support, because obviously you would be an international student going over to the UK. Um, we also do have career services to help you find international and domestic linkages as you are able to stay for two years after your studies. Um, 
So that's a great feature. So these are all of our faculties. There are four of them. And then under that, you'll see kind of the larger groupings. But there again, there are 160 majors. The ones we're more known for are environmental science and creative writing. But we also have a renewed emphasis on our engineering programs. Also, where we do well within business, economics, and international development. Um, so again, check out all of our programs online. We are on the UCAS application that is a UK common app. <laughs> Essentially, if you want to think of it like that, you can apply to five different schools through that. Um, there is an application fee, but I believe in the US dollars, it's about $35 to $40 for all of your choices. So not too expensive there. For our requirements, we look at a 3.3 GPA or higher, depending on your program. You do apply specifically to your program. So you do need to know exactly what you want to get into. And then on top of that, we do require require three AP or IB exams or an SAT or ACT of um, an SAT of 1280 or an ACT of 12 or 27 plus. If your program has a subject specific requirement on it, you do need to have an AP exam in that subject um, in order to take to take that course and qualify for it. You also need demonstrated academic interest. Some of our courses will require interviews, auditions, or portfolios, and all those can typically be done virtual. Our costs are about twenty-four dollars um, to $30,000. Uh, medicine is, of course, way more expensive, and the cost of living is about $13,000 US dollars. We do have scholarships, one of which is automatic of 4,000 pounds. We also are FAFSA loan eligible. So if you can get FAFSA, you can take them over to the UK and students are eligible to work 20 hours during the, during the courses or 40 hours while on break. Finally, do connect with us on social media. I'll also put my information in the chat if you do want to connect with me directly. We do have a student ambassador. She's in her final year and from California. So she's great to connect with if you want to know about the student experience on campus um, explicitly. All right. Thank you so much, Russ, and thanks everyone for attending. Thank you, everyone. And I'm going to uh, ask that uh, all of our reps come back on our um, their video and then their audio. And we're going to do a quick Q&A in the order that you presented since we have about three minutes left. So we'll just do a quick one question uh, virtual talk show here and get uh, a little bit more info. And the, the question we have, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with Texas Tech University. Hey, thank you. Uh, my biggest advice is, um, you know, you're going to be looking at a lot of colleges. Don't narrow yourself down on just one. Keep yourself organized. We all have different dates, deadlines, and all of these things, and I don't want you to mess up on anything. So I, I'm a big fan, a, a Excel document. Keep all your dates on there. Mark off what you've done and stuff like that. Staying organized will make this process and apply early. Make this process easy. McPherson College. Yeah, my piece of advice would be the same. Make sure you visit institutions of all sizes. And after you visited those institutions, make sure you see a full financial aid package from every institution before you make your decision. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. My advice is going to be a little bit more personal because I'm first generation in my family. Um, so I was the first in my family to attend college. And I just think that the money's out there so that you can achieve and attend any university that you want to. You're just gonna have to do the footwork. You're gonna have to do the research. You know, work closely with your admissions counselor, work closely with your financial aid counselor, um, but you can figure out how to afford any college that you wanna go to. Webster University. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, the biggest thing would be uh, trust your gut. Um, Josh uh, from McPherson mentioned, make sure you visit colleges. When you visit, um, you know, if you get that feeling that, you know, I see myself uh, being able to go to school here, I like it here. Um, that really is very, very critical. I'll talk to a lot of students who, who have, after they visit Webster, they say, I could just tell when I was on my campus tour that this was the place uh, I belonged, that it was just the right place for me. So trust your gut, trust your instinct. If it feels right, it probably is right. DePaul University. Yeah, a lot of people took what I was going to say. So <laughs> I think not to reiterate, um, I would just say really get to know your admission counselor. Every single university has someone assigned to your school um, or your state. So make sure you get to know that person um, and they can be, really be like your go-to person throughout the whole process. We're here to help you. Um, and, you know, oftentimes I, I could have like 50 emails in my inbox, but um, if I recognize your name, I'm more likely to be able to get to yours earlier in the day. So um, just again, try to build that relationship as soon as possible. 
And last but not least, University of East Anglia. Uh, so we are the only UK school here. So just to let students know that studying abroad for a full degree is possible and probably more obtainable than you think. Um, so if you think it might be a possibility, obviously starting those conversations a bit earlier is necessary. But, you know, to kind of throw that wrench in of whether even in-state, out-of-state or international, we like students to consider that or think about that as an option for themselves as well. Well, thank you all for that great advice. And I want to thank all of you for uh, presenting today. I want to thank everyone for attending this session. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional ones. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings. You can find the recordings and sign up for additional sessions at the same place where you signed up for this one. Once again, thank you to our six representatives or seven representatives for joining us for this session and presenting today and have a great rest of your Sunday. Take care.